Hey, so today I wanted to make this video to give you a bit more help and assistance around my recipe for making the gluten-free rough puff pastry, the much-awaited sought-after recipe for the puff pastry. So this is what you need. It's good to have everything laid out in advance. So I've got a large bowl and a sieve. I've got 135 grams of gluten-free plain flour. 125 grams of butter cut into little chunks, that is very cool. I have xanthan gum, a teaspoon will be plenty. I have 65 millilitres of very, very cold water. I have some salt, I need half a teaspoon of that. And it's also good to have left out some cling film, enough to wrap a ball in, and a sharp knife and a rolling pin. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is sift in the flour with the xanthan gum. Left-handed sifting isn't the easiest thing when you're right-handed. Lovely. And then I'm going to add the half teaspoon of salt. Oops, and that was probably a bit much. Give it a little mix. I'm going to add one third of this butter, so I'll just put that much in. And what we're going to do here is really work this through so that it's almost if you're making breadcrumbs, um, just get it a good mix in. Just keep running it between your fingers, squeeze, 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 mix, 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 rub, rub, rub until there's no lumps of butter left at all. Now I'm going to add the rest of the butter now, but this is a little bit different. What we do here is we're just kind of tossing it around, bashing it so that the flour presses in against, just kind of pressing it into the edges so that they are not as pointy and sharp. Just getting a good coat on it, working it round. The reason that we're doing this and not working it through completely is because we want the layers between the different layers of pastry, it's if the butter had melted, then it's just going to be a solid gloop. So we need to keep chunks in it. That should be all right just now. So the next thing I'm going to do is add the, the very cold water and I'm just going to fire it in and then quickly bring it together with my hands. This is the horrible messy bit. You don't want to overwork it, remember, because your hands are warm and it will melt the butter. And I'm bringing it together so that it starts to form a ball, just squeezing it gently together, tossing it around. The butter will soften a little, which is good because it just helps it all. I'm just pressing it down. It does seem very crumbly, but just stay with it. So I'm not going to overwork it just now because I can feel that it is starting to get quite soft. So I'm happy with that. A rough ball, you can still see there's lumps of butter in there. My fingers are a mess. Here is the cling film. Da, 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 da. Stick it in the fridge for 20 minutes. I have taken the ball of our lovely pastry out of the fridge now. It was in there for at least 10 minutes. And what I'm going to do is dust the work surface with the gluten-free plain flour. Put that on and I'm just going to kind of roll it into a bit more of a shape. Now you'll see that it's crumbly. Don't worry about that at this stage because we just can't overwork it too much. If you overwork it, the butter will melt. Now, this is the, the tips that I have for rolling it. We want it to go lengthways and not be too wide, but when you're rolling it, don't go too heavy over the edge because if you flatten it, you're going to stop it from separating, forming all those lovely layers. We just want to roll it nice like this and roll in one direction. And that's nothing to do with a certain successful pop band at the moment. And as I said, it looks crumbly and it looks a mess, but stick with it because who said 
in gluten free was completely easy. I'm almost happy with that length. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to fold it the same way that you would fold the pasta in the, the book that I mentioned. We take the top half and we just fold it down to there. And then like a book, we'll then just fold that over to there. I'm just going to dust again, round about, a little bit under. Look, if it, bits fall off, don't worry about it, just chuck them to the side. Now you'll see that I rotated that 90 degrees that way. And what we're going to do now is for the second time, roll out away from me again. Now we do this a few more times, but as you do it, it will get neater. The sides will become straighter and it will become easier to work with, so don't panic. I'll just press that down gently there. I'm actually just going to put a little coating of butter on the rolling pin just because I could feel that the butter was causing that to stick there. I want it to go to roughly the same length as before. It probably won't go quite as far. Once again, I'm going to do that cheeky little fold. So from the top, fold down to there. I think of it as thirds, so one third, two thirds, and that was the third third. Third over the second, and the first over both, just like that. Bring back the cling film that you didn't scrumple into a ball. And we're just going to wrap that up again like so. Remember in the position it was in because we're going to continue to rotate it 90 degrees each time. So when I bring it out of the fridge, I know to turn it round that way again. And another 20 minutes in the fridge just to make sure that the butter isn't melting. So I've taken it out of the fridge and we're about to do the third roll out. So remember to turn it 90 degrees from where you last had it. I've dusted the work surface again and I'm just giving the rolling pin a little dusting. And here we go. So you can feel it's tougher if it's been in the fridge again. So just using your strength, roll out but don't go right to the very end. Let's see how far we can get this. Now the reason that we can only use a sharp knife is similar to not rolling over the edge. It's because if you use a blunt knife and you're trying to cut down, it's just going to press the layers together. Whereas if you use a very sharp knife or later on a very sort of sharp pastry cutter, it's going to cut right through without making them all join together. Nearly coming off the end of the table here. Oops. I'm just going to trim that little bit off of the edge actually because it's getting a little bit knobbly bobbly. So just quick like that, there we are, sorted, done. And I'll trim that wee bit off at the bottom too there. Lovely. And again, fold down top third over to the middle third and bottom up and over. Just give the worktop another little dust. And then rotate that round and I'll start back a little further this time. This is roll number four. And this is this almost the last roll. This is the last rotation, sort of, because we're going to have to put this back in the fridge for another 20 minutes. But the good news is, after this 20 minutes, you just roll it out, cut it to shape, and you're ready to use it. Now look at that, is that not coming together nicely? It looked rough at the start, and I told you it did, but now it's coming to look almost there as if it's normal roll pastry. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. And then up, cling film. 
And again, 20 minutes in the fridge, when it comes out, we'll put it round to 90 degrees, roll it, and then it's ready to use. So I'll see you then when we're going to be making some lovely treats. So this, as you'll be delighted to know, is the very last time we need to use this and also twist and turn and all that. So this is the last twist, 90 degrees, and now we're rolling it out to use it. Oh, that's got a nice chill, you can feel that it's stiff. So just working quite quickly, roll to the end, rolling in one direction, we're just going to get that wee dusting. So there's loads and loads and loads of different things you can make with your puff pastry that you'll be addicted to making and I'm just going to show you how to make just a simple round shape that we'd use for you know putting on top of some stew to make a wee steak pie and I'll show you how to make a quick and simple cheese straw which is great party food. Okay, I'm going to use this cutter here. I would say that's about 10 centimeters. And as I said before, do it quick. Make sure that it's not, you know, super thick and blunt. It needs to go right through without making all the layers join together, like that. And just give it a wee twist. And it would have helped if I had my tray handy. I've got a slightly oiled tray, just so it doesn't stick. Just very, very lightly oiled. I'm just going to carry that over. And then gently, without pressing too hard, drop it on. And I'll do two of these bad boys. The oven has been preheated to 220 degrees Celsius. And I would say it would take about between 15 and 20 minutes um, at that temperature to rise, flake up and go awesome. Okay, so this is how I make these cheese straws. I've cut that rough rectangular shape and I'm just going to, with a very sharp knife, do this, do this, do this. And then, just pick it up, twist it as I place it down like that. Pick it up, twist as I place it down. Pick and twist. And I'll just move that down a bit, twist and drop that on, like so. I have some lovely milk here. You could use a beaten egg, but I like the milk. And I'm just going to brush all of it, including the rounds, with the milk. Just, it's a bit awkward to do the twists, but do that and that. That. Just rough, it doesn't need to be awesome because it will be awesome whether it's awesome or not. And I've grated some lovely cheddar cheese here that was actually described as plasticky, but that's the way I like it. And I'm just going to drip drop that over the cheese twists like that, that should be enough. And as I said, 15 to 20 minutes in the oven at 220 degrees. Time to remove our delicious delights out of the oven now. Perhaps a little more well fired than I would normally allow. However, I'm delighted with how much that has risen and by all those layers, look at that, is that not fantastic? And we're delicious cheese straws, which won't last very long at all.